Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Which Garcia? The one whose name is Piranha. We need a guide to the high Amazon. <laughs> Look for someone else. I'm not setting a foot in that place. Come here! Hurry! Do something and get inside! What is it? Some kind of fish! Fish! Damn thing trying to crawl inside of it! Crazy. Why? Because they can't eat our type of food. Not with all the preservatives we have in them. We eat one brand of food and they eat another. Oh, I prefer to eat our kind of food. Uh, help me! <gasps> Take it with me. Pete, get something to make a tourniquet. Uh. Give me your knife. Uh. Well, we could amputate the leg, but... see each other again. The waters of the river decide we just have to wait. And welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for Green Inferno, a.k.a. Cannibal Holocaust 2 from ooh, the, the lovely year of 1988. Okay, right, where do we begin with this one? Well, let's jump straight to the blurb on the 88 Films website. So this is disc number 49 in the collection, and it says, For years fans waited for the release of a sequel to Ruggiero Diodato's trend-setting Cannibal Holocaust from 1980, yet it would take almost a decade for The Green Inferno, also known as Cannibal Holocaust 2, to arrive, and it was not, perhaps, what followers of the cycle in Italian and nasty native movies were expecting. Whilst Diodato's original ben benchmark critique the Mondo film pseudo-documentary phenomenon, partly instigated by cinematographer and director Antonio Clemetti of Mondo Can uh, and Savage Man, Savage Beast, here the focus turns to satirising the hypocrisy and complexity 
of Cannibal Holocaust itself. Directed by Clemetti, Cannibal Holocaust 2 sees some inter- enterprising adventures traipsing into the Amazon jungle in search of a missing professor and, in the interim, the youngsters encounter some indications that slavery and European colonialism is still robbing the Colombian rainforest blind. A mix of macabre images, scenic locations, castrations and sly and jokes, uh, Cannibal Holocaust 2 introduces some belated bad taste humour into familiar jungle territory and requires immediate reappraisal for tribal terror completists which is a meal best served in glorious HD by the video nasty enthusiasts at 88 Films. The special features on the disc are a brand new 2K remaster from the original camera negatives in 166.1 aspect ratio, an extensive cleanup and colour correction which was carried out in the UK, remastered uncompressed English audio, remastered uncompressed Italian audio with newly translated subtitles. Scenes from Band Alive, the rise and fall of Italian cannibal movies, featuring legendary Italian directors Ruggiero Diodato, Umberto Lenzi and Sergio Martino, as they discuss notorious cannibal films that they had been involved in, including The Man from Deep River, Eaten Alive, Cannibal Ferox, Cannibal Holocaust and Mountain of the Cannibal God. You have the original opening and closing Italian credits, the remastered trailer and reversible sleeve with the Italian poster design. Technical specs in the disc are as region unlocked, so it's available in region A, B and C. The audio is LPCM stereo, picture is 1080p HD 166.1. The runtime is about an hour and a half. The language is both English and Italian with English subtitles. So this was a first time watch for me. I am vaguely, acutely aware of Green Inferno, um, it, you know, obviously is direct, directly referenced um, in the Eli Roth kind of homage is probably the best way to, to, to categorise it, um, cannibal movie that he made, Green Inferno being what they refer to the, the, the territory they go to in Cannibal Holocaust and then obviously directly referencing the name here for Cannibal Holocaust 2. Uh, I knew nothing else about it except that it did come some time after. And oh, let's be frank here, um, the heyday of Italian cannibal movies was long since gone by the time that this movie came out. So part of me was curious to see what what it was going to bring to the mix, especially after reading that blurb, which is like you know, busting at the seams with, you know, accolades and credits towards how satirical and clever it is. Um, Sadly, the viewing experience doesn't actually really live up to that. And I'm sure on some level, Clemetti himself um, has kind of leaned into, well, I'm trying to be clever and I'm trying to put fun at, you know, the seriousness of a movie like Cannibal Holocaust doing what I'm doing here. Ultimately, what I found was a very pedestrian kind of almost paint by numbers Italian cannibal movie. I didn't really feel at any point this was, you know, satirically poking fun at Cannibal Holocaust. Now, I'll put my cards on the table here. Cannibal Holocaust is a hugely important movie to me. It's not a movie that I revisit often, mostly because I don't feel well when it finishes. It's a movie that I think is so far ahead of its time that it's, it's kind of difficult to wrap your head around how clever it is and at the same time how macabre it is. The stories that follow that production are things of movie legend. So, you know, if you are going to be taking a stab at kind of pointing out how serious uh, Cannibal Holocaust takes itself then you need to be bringing your A-game here and what I found specifically when watching it was that this movie has a lot of tongue-in-cheek humour for sure but I wouldn't necessarily say the tongue-in-cheek humour is satirising what they do in Cannibal Holocaust at all. If anything, I think it just speaks to the time. This is a movie that comes out in 1988 and horror movies, for the most part, in 19, genre movies for the most part in 1988, tend to have this kind of, well, we need to make them fun. 
we need to make them over the top with larger than life characters because that's what audiences are craving. And that is where I'm more inclined to see that this movie falls rather than the, well, you know, it's taken a swipe, at Cannibal Holocaust. Now, to also be clear, that's not the reason I'm talking negatively about this movie, regardless whether or not this movie is a play on what uh, Diodato did in his Cannibal Holocaust movie, I ultimately just kind of have to critique, critique it on its, its own merits. The movie is shot well, the cinematography is really good in this one, um, and it, it looks actually like a bit of money has been spent on it, but then when you understand that Clemente is a you know cinematographer by trade, that kind of makes sense. His visual eye is quite appealing, um, and it's a, it's a very pretty movie to look at. The humour, like I say, is... Uh, I can take it or leave it. Um, and I've seen it done in other movies. You watch a movie like Man from Deep River, for example, there's a lot of that that kind of feels like it's ebbing in there. There's a lot of scenes in here that just feel like we are just recreating Cannibal Holocaust, though. Um, certain animals make appearances um, at certain times that kind of feel like we are nodding and winking to the fact that they were used in that movie in the same way that a movie like Cannibal Ferox would do, which I kind of feel is less, you know, kind of less paying homage and more just this is what audiences expect now. I also think that when you watch any cannibal movie post cannibal holocaust it's difficult to it's difficult to bring something fresh to the release and um, we've already covered a couple of cannibal movies as part of this 88 films run which come post cannibal holocaust and what has been the interesting aspect of that watching it is how they don't really stack up how we're starting to move away from the gnarliness, mostly because of when they're being released, because um, like censorship is tightening the noose now. But at the same time, it's kind of set the bar so fucking high, it's really difficult to do anything that is going to add that level of shock. And most cannibal movies are aiming for that level of shock. And if they can impart a bit of that kind of Romero sort of wink wink nudge nudge there's actually a really good socio message or socio political message um, a societal theme so to speak then you know all the better for it but Green Inferno doesn't really have that um, it kind of jumps from set piece to set piece with various bits and bobs of humour it touches on all the the kind of the mainstay things from the genre as a whole without necessarily bringing anything new to the table and even by kind of gore standards it's rather tame um it it didn't deliver for me if i'm honest and this was one that was kind of looking forward to checking out it's by no you know means a, a not a good movie and um, but at the same time you know, like 88 films have done their done their job here. They have really put forward a bold statement in the blurb for this one that doesn't really equate to the viewing experience, in my opinion. Ultimately, what you're left with is a very pretty, very well shot, um, paint-by-numbers Italian genre cannibal movie. Uh, and nothing more and nothing less than that. So, yeah, I think if you are a completist, ticking this one off the list is probably a good idea. However, if you're looking for something that takes the genre somewhere else, this isn't the movie. It's kind of a, a hodgepodge of all the other ones that precede it without necessarily moving the genre forward. And I imagine that's why the genre died pretty quick after this, because there is no, there is no new road to take this down. There is no new way to package what has already been packaged a few times over. Um, and as a result, and what was really weird is obviously watching a movie like Parents Yesterday for the Listener Choice one, which is an American cannibal movie from the year after this. And that brings a lot of freshness, a lot of dark comedy to it, and feels like it's a satirical finger poke at the uh, the kind of suburban ideals of Americana lifestyle in the 50s. 
that to me is a, a, a kind of cool message at its core. And then I watch this one, and this one's a bit dead behind the eyes. It has the look, has the smell, and has the feel of a cannibal movie for sure. What it doesn't really have is the soul. It just kind of feels like a, you know, a vehicle to let Clemente do something that he was kind of familiar with and put out something as a means to make a movie without necessarily giving us a movie which I feel needs a bit of soul behind it. I don't think that's here. The score works really well with it as well. So once again, what like with a lot of these Italian movies, when the story doesn't necessarily deliver or where the acting is a bit ropey, the cinematography and the, the you know the the sin track usually carry quite a bit of interest in my eyes and it's the same here it does that very very well overall i wouldn't say it was a bad movie i I can't see myself ever really rushing to watch cannibal holocaust 2 again aka the green inferno i give it a three i liked it for what it was but i could never go anything higher than that certainly not a bad movie but if you watched a lot of these movies and that's maybe the caveat if you're kind of fairly green to cannibal movies from this part of the world then this is maybe a really good entry point uh, and then you build up your tolerance through gnarlier grittier movies but if you've watched a few of the big heavy hitters from this you're eating alive you're you know cannibal holocaust or even ferox to an extent this feels like a step down uh, overall so a three out of five for this movie